Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to share with you my NES collection. And it's a bit small, but it's got some key ingredients in it to make it quite the powerful little gaming recipe. Now when it comes to gaming, usually I like anything Disney, classic Nintendo, or things that look good and hopefully play well once you get it out of the box. Now we're going in alphabetical order. First up in my collection is Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. Now Capcom made a lot of Disney games, but they actually made a Disney theme park game. I love Disney theme parks. I love researching how the rides work, all that cool stuff. And I played this game when I didn't own a game console. My parents rented me the Super Nintendo and the NES uh, randomly throughout my early childhood. And I actually thought this was a Super Nintendo game at first because uh, I remember owning a Super Nintendo eventually. But no, this was an NES game, and I remember I loved it because I loved Disney theme park videos. I loved, like, you remember the, the, what's it called? Where it's like lyric videos for kids and the ball bounces up and down the lyrics. They had those for the Disney theme parks. So I was, I was already hooked, and I still am hooked on Disney stuff. So the whole point of this game is to get six silver keys to unlock the castle in the Magic Kingdom. And the way you do that is by going on the ride. So each level equaled a different gameplay style. So for instance, Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion were side-scrolling action platforming levels where you had to get through the Haunted Mansion and avoid the ghosts, and in the Pirates one, you had to avoid the pirates while capturing, not capturing, <laughs> saving the damsels in distress. You're a good guy, not a pirate. There was a top-down racing game in the Autopia ride, and Space Mountain was actually like a quick time event where you're going through space, but like it'll prompt you with button presses, and you have to press them, or else you're gonna get blown up by space baddies. Or you'll go the wrong way, and how the hell do you know where you're going in the inky blackness of space? Fun fact about Space Mountain, all the stars that are around in the ride, that's caused by disco balls in the ceiling. The Big Thunder Mountain level is kind of like a top-down eraser. You have to choose the correct path, and this whole game is pretty tricky, but it plays really well. You wouldn't expect anything less from a Capcom game. Next up in my collection is Double Dragon 2. I like the Double Dragon series. I really like Double Dragon Battle Toads for Super Nintendo. I remember playing that with my friends um, back in the day. But this is just some good OG, I was gonna say Dragon Quest. This isn't Dragon Quest. This is Double Dragon. Imagine Double Dragon Quest. That's a crossover that needs to happen. But yeah, it's a beat-em-up that I quite like. I don't necessarily like the controls the best, because like to kick or like attack left, you have to press the button on the left side, which is B or A, and then to attack your enemies on the right side, you need to click the button that's on the right. I don't like that setup. You have to press both buttons to jump. Not my favorite uh, thing to do in a video game. Um, but other than that, it's a solid uh, beat-em-up that I quite enjoy. Road Blasters is one of those games that looked like it would be good. So I picked it up. It's it's kind of bland. It's, you know, it's your bread and butter. Um, it's like an arcade racer where you also blast things, hence the name Road Blasters. Um, and you gotta make sure your fuel doesn't run out, so you gotta pick up little green, I think they're green balls along the way on the road, uh, and just attack anyone in your, in your path to get to the end of it. Not bad game. Didn't surprise me, didn't disappoint me. Now we're getting into some classics. So this is the first of the Mario Brothers NES trilogy, and what can I say about this that hasn't already been said? It's, it's Mario. He can like go down warp pipes. Uh, you can collect money and coins like in real life, but it's a lot more fun to make money in this game. Um, you have overalls that I don't think are stained at all and never get stained, even when you stomp on enemies and you know you think their organs go everywhere, but they don't. They, you're you're perfectly clean, clean of any blood from your hands. Uh, you would have thought the plumbers get a bit dirty. Well, I said that about the game. I don't know if that's been said. I don't know if it should have been said. Mario. And what comes after Mario 1? Mario 2! Mario Dos. Mario 2. Different languages doesn't help uh, sell the fact that you probably already know a lot about this game too. Uh, my favorite character to play as in this game is Peach because she can fly. Why would you be anyone else? Peach can fly. She can fly over large gaps. I love Princess Peach. She's amazing. She won't return my phone calls. Uh, I also like how, you can see there, the Mario games had a Mattel logo on it. Video games were considered toys at some point back in the day. <laughs> 
It's interactive entertainment. It's a huge industry. And then you reach the end of the trilogy. You, you close off with Super Mario Brothers 3, uh, and it's one of the best Mario games of all time. This thing is just packed with nutrients and vitamins, and you'll get abs from playing it. It's challenging, it's fun, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll go, let's go! I, like, what do I say about this one too? You know, you can find out a lot about a game by reading its instruction booklet. <laughs> These are my seven children that are gonna help me take over the mushroom world. So it isn't the mushroom kingdom in this game. This is the mushroom world. I think they're separate because I've never seen any of the other levels uh, repeat in any of the other games. In Mario 64, you jump in paintings for goodness sake, holy cow. The next game I have is the relentless building block video puzzle, Tetris. That's a way to describe it. It's not the best copy. There is a little bit of pen marks and like a scratch right there. But guess what? It's Tetris. You gotta have it in your collection. If you don't have the Game Boy game, you gotta get it somehow. I've got Tetris in my collection because it is a classic. I felt like I should have it somewhere in there. You know, you choose the mode you want. Uh, you choose how fast the blocks go and stuff. The blocks are squares and a square is a shape that's got four corners. And the last game in my collection is The Legend of Zelda. Look at this gold cart. It says Mattel on it too. I'm trying to get kids to buy this because it's made of gold while well, it worked on me. You know, legend has it, if you blow into the cartridge at the right pitch and intervals, you can actually play it like an ocarina. This is, you go on quite the amazing quest here. I have not beaten it, but I've gotten pretty far in it. And it's just as entertaining as any of the other Zelda games. And you can see the formula from this game being used in games up to like Skyward Sword. So that was my short but sweet NES collection. I would love to hear about your NES collections and what your favorite games for the console are. What are some hidden gems for it? Let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you next time in another video. Just bye bye, I love you.